Oh, you're the 200 level. And mine stays in 103. Which we don't If it's like this, you can make it Good morning. How's everyone this morning? Good, good. Welcome to the first panel for Hasbro this uh, fine Friday morning. So Transformers team that we've brought up from our um, global group in Providence, Rhode Island. We have uh, John Warden, who is the Global Senior Design Manager, and Rand Sun, who is our Global Brand Manager. So we're extremely excited to have everyone here today. I think uh, celebrating the 35th anniversary of Transformers is absolutely incredible. I remember my first uh, Starscream Transformers toy that I got uh, right after the, the brand came out, and I think Ever since then, I've had this, this love for, for the Transformers brand, so I think it's, it's really exciting for me, and personally one of my favorite days when we get to get, uh, get to connect with the fans and have everybody here together. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Rand to take you guys through some pretty exciting stuff. Thanks. All right, thanks, Rand. Hey, guys. We're so excited to be here. John and I, it's our first time in Toronto, and we're yeah. just like, loving the city. Like, every every corner, we're stopping to see the beautiful scenery and enjoying this beautiful had some, summer weather. Had some maple syrup, but not had Tim Hortons yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a little off. So. Yeah, we got to get that before we leave. So I grew up across Lake Erie in, in uh, a little town uh, called Vermilion. And uh, so I would always look across the lake and dream about Canada. So it's really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> we're finally here. Yeah, so we're going to start off by celebrating our 35th. So as Greg mentioned, this is a really, really special year for us for Transformers fans. Um, and we're just so excited um, that this heritage and the brand has been up this long. And we have such a strong and awesome fans like you guys. So we have a little clip that celebrates the 35th anniversary. So I'm going to play it right now. <laughs> In a world of constant change, one thing remains. The power of Transformers. 35 years of larger-than-life robots who hide in plain sight. And blockbuster entertainment with heroes to look up to and villains to root for. Years to come, Transformers will continue to inspire all that is more than meets the eye. And not only that, we also have our newest Commander Class Jetfire to give away. So just, you know, make sure you stay tuned and, and you know, like, uh, questions to be answered. So one small correction. Yeah? It is actually Ectotron. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the I'm going to have to take your geek badge away now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he's also just as cool, and we love that item. So. Arguably, yeah. As, I would say more cool. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we'll be doing that giveaway throughout the panel. Um, and all right, so let's just uh, jump right into it. We're going to start off with uh, Cyberverse. Sweet. So what's really exciting about Cyberverse is that um, it gives us a chance to connect with the next generation of fans. You know, for for a lot of fans that came into this, you're a G1 fan or you're a Beast Wars fan with Cyberverse. Um, fans are, are able to enjoy this with their young ones in their, in their, in their lives. And it's actually kind of a fun, a fun thing to be able to be part of. So as we, uh, as we look towards the next season, Power of the Spark, there's a lot of cool things that are happening with Spark Armor and the power of the AllSpark. And we want to give you a quick glimpse into the design process that went into some of these awesome new technologies that Transformers are using. Yeah, so we can see a little bit of a season two uh, clip here, right? That's right. We're going to see a little bit of a clip here with some interesting familiar faces using the power of the Spark. Oh, 
Starscream's trying to play both sides there. We never <laughs> never see that coming. That's not that's not Starscream Typical at Starscream. all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before we go through the next um, slides, should we do a really quick giveaway right now? I kind of think we should. Ooh, yeah. trivia right. time. We are going to do time. some trivia, and standard, uh, standard kindergarten rules apply. First hand up for <laughs> Ecto-1. Um, first question, which of the following two is a Dinobot? Sludge or Springer? So get that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, uh, uh, correct. He is correct. He is sludge. Oh, yeah. We talk about trash. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll have a lot more com uh, tri uh, trivia questions throughout the panel. So Cyberverse is interesting because we're able to bring a lot of those cool toy technologies you see in the cartoon to life in, in toy with the partnership we have with Takara. So we can show you a couple of really cool clips here for the new line of toys. But I promise we'll get the from Transformers Cyberverse. Optimus, use the arc to power up with the energy of the arc. Combine and convert to armor up Optimus Prime. Oh yeah! New arc power Optimus from Transformers Cyberverse. Cool. Any more? From Transformers yes. Cyberverse. Optimus power up with that jet. With the energy of the AllSpark. Combine and convert to armor up Optimus Prime. Oh, yeah! Use Spark Armor Vigils from Transformer Cyberverse, each sold separately. So in order to make these toy technologies come to life, um, the designers at Hasbro were able to create concept art that really brought together weird form factors. Like, my favorite one is the... Um, Grimlock with a trash truck there, because it, or, or you know, Bumblebee with, with the ocean liner. Um, being able to harness different weird vehicular forms really was something the designers wanted to push. And when we worked with the studio, we were able to bring to life great characters like Skybite here, that you remember in that clip, of uh, being able to, you know, have the tactical advantage of a digging machine. Um, so you can see the cool, the cool art here. This is actually like the, uh, the Boulder team and really cap, like grabbing onto that vision. We also have um, Starscream, who's equipped with the with the cool um, the technology that he got from the digging machine. Yeah, he's with construction cars and there's Jetfire, and you saw Jetfire can weaponize as well. With tanks. With tanks. So 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 tanks, Starscream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, John does that sometimes. He does do the dad jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 
terrible. <laughs> yeah, but we're so excited for Cyberverse, and we're getting amazing traction on this new series, and uh, Season 2 is available right. on now, so uh, keep your eyes for that new series. And then so we're going to jump right into the next uh, segment, which is a Generation Studio Series. So who here is ready for some reveals, exclusive reveals? Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so I just want to do a really quick recap. Uh, so we had our uh, Mexico Fan Expo uh, fan, uh, unboxing experience at the beginning of this month, and we revealed some new deluxe figures that are coming into next year. Uh, so they'll be available the 1st of January 2020, and we reveal the first Transformers movie along with the third movie's uh, Sunday. So I have to say, Studio Series is my favorite series because I kind of grew up in that 90s, um, so like that's how I was introduced in uh, Transformers. And I know you're coming from G1, so... Yeah, um, I, you know I like G1 and, and Beast Wars. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny. It's it's a cool thing about Studio Series. Is there are a lot of kids that grew up in the 2000s, and for them, this really is their Transformers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we also revealed some um, awesome characters like the three uh, female bike, which is the first time we're doing the three deluxe figures in our um, studio series line. And we have our original um, World War II hot rod design from the fifth film. So yeah. we're just so excited for these figures. So now we're on to our brand new reveal, which is that we're also going to reveal wave one of Voyager and Leader class today. And the first character we have is our TF Megatron. That's right, Transformers 1 Megatron. For many fans, this is the penultimate version of Megatron. Um, and it's, it's exciting to see this guy come to life in Voyager scale, um, scale after the Optimus Prime. Very cool. You have to see it to believe it. So check out check out the images online soon. It's going to be really awesome. Yeah, and we sort of teased um, there are a lot of constructed ones throughout That's the year. right, that's so right. The next one Devastator. is going to be... Mixmaster. Woo! So Mixmaster forms the head of Devastator, which is going to be very exciting. And he's actually a licensed Mack truck, and it's hard to see in this picture, but it actually has the tiny bulldog molded into the front of it. It was crazy. Uh, very, very cool toy. Yeah. So speaking of Constructicons that become Devastator, we got Ooh, more. This one's my favorite. Oh, so bonkers. Scavenger. scavenger. So he's, he's huge, he's weird, he's got the two wheels for a body. So big, in fact, that you have to rotate the wheels even to fit him in the package. So he's an incredible, hefty piece that is the essential element that really is required to put all of Devastator together. Very, very cool toy. Yes. Yeah. And we got one more leader figure. Which is Ooh, this one, like this one actually might be a my line. Ah, Shockwave. Shockwave. So Shockwave, you guys know, we didn't see him transform in the film, but a lot of fans uh, vision him as being a tank. So we would throw back to the toys of Transformers 3. And we, we looked at his tank mode. We put in lots of other cool Easter eggs in here, including Wheelie and Brains, who are literally super tiny. They're like the size of like a lima bean or smaller. Um, I think one of them's almost the size of a grain of rice. Like So be careful. <laughs> These will become expensive in the secondary market someday. But probably the coolest thing of all is it comes with a tiny little paratrooper with a soft goods uh, para parachute. That you can drape over them, and if I had one here, I could show you that actually we've engineered it to pretty much fall. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, the best thing about all these revealed characters today are we're going to have samples down at our booth after our panel. So if you want to take a uh, look at these uh, toys in hand, uh, you can take pictures and look at them. So be sure to check out our booth. Yeah. Where's your booth? Oh, uh, where's our booth? That's a good We're in the uh, EV Games booth. So there's a Hasbro section right in, to, in the EV Games booth. Awesome. All right, so before we go to the next section, should we uh, do another trivia? Ooh, trivia time! <laughs> and I think one of the coolest things about Transformers is because it's for all generations, let's see if we can do this for some of our youngest fans that are in the room. So if they need a little bit of help, um, let's help them out. But which Decepticon converts from a cassette to a panther, Ravage or Frenzy? Let's look for some of the younger fans. There's one right in the, the very back there. Oh, yeah, you. with the hat. Correct. Here <laughs> <laughs> right. we go. Enjoy Ectotron. Bop for everybody. All right. So uh, we're going to dive right into our War for Cybertron Siege series. So 
This is a line that, ooh, yeah, thank you, <laughs> that we uh, started this year. And we're just so proud and we're so excited for your reactions about the work of the uh, It's time. great. And, you know, when we, when we read uh, the, the comments online, we're, we're, we put a lot of ourselves, the designers, uh, put a lot in, the marketing people, engineering people, put so much of ourselves into this and the whole Takara Tomi team. And to hear the fan response, thank you so much. Yeah. Great. And for those who don't know, uh, this line is uh, product line is inspired by the epic final war on Cybertron between the two factions, the uh, Decepticon Resistance Army and the Autobot Counter um, Army. So it's a very a uh, civil war war kind of story. So you see a lot of uh, decos that's war tone and has a lot of weapons in the figures. So uh, we have a special clip that we've never uh, shown never in the be. public, which is basically the um, commercial of our War for Cybertron Siege. So we just wanted to. Uh, one of the f most fun commercials I've ever had the opportunity to be part of. Yeah, absolutely. It is really awesome. Combine and weaponize with new Transformers War for Cybertron. Calling all Autobots. The Decepticon siege has pushed us to the brink, but the war rages on. Combine together and help protect what's left of Cybertron. New Transformers War for Cybertron. Easel is everything. <laughs> So when we were filming this thing, we literally had this high-tech camera that was going dollying around in slow motion, and uh, we had all these sets of Cybertron built. I'm like, my God, this is the coolest day of my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. We should uh, record those uh, shooting in the future. Just pictures, pictures of me <laughs> going like... Just <laughs> 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 um, So uh, at uh, San Diego Comic Con this year, we revealed our last wave of Warp of Cybertron Siege characters that included some awesome characters that you see here. And they're actually available for pre-order now. So for those of you who are really interested in more for Simon John Siege figures, then you got to have some of these characters, like Astro Train is my favorite. Aim face, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, they're available uh, for pre-order uh, at accounts nationwide. And we have some uh, interesting exclusive items that we wanted to walk you guys through. Maybe you guys so, might know about this one, but I don't know how many, raise your hand if you're building a camera out there. How many of you guys have the uh, have reflect refractors? refractors? Yeah. Okay, he's got, he's got some. So it's possible to build the standard issue camera, but my favorite really are the, the, the really old mail away versions, the original Takara colors. We're boxing those up together and putting releasing them on an online uh, Pulse exclusive, right, yeah. I believe? Yeah, but in Canada, it's going to be at, uh, exclusive for Toys R Us. So oh, that's so great. That's fantastic. Yeah. And What's really cool about this about this version is it has a really unique box. It has holofoil on it, and um, when you pull it out, we we've taken care to make it really feel like a, a real camera. So that there's a camera manual in there, and you open it up, and then we've also included this is the only place where you can get Kremzik, who is who is a blast effect character. It's got a three millimeter board on his foot, and uh, it's a really really fun set. So so check it out. Exclusive camera parts you can only get with this. And then our next uh, pack is a really fun pack that uh, you guys voted on these two characters. That's so right. made it into a, a battle free pack. Yeah, so we've got um, Impactor. This is a this is a Decepticon version of Impactor based on the IDW appearance and construction stripes. But you've also got the hologram Mirage with the uh, toy head, the Sphinx head, and then an exclusive Power Mass or Power yeah. Power Dasher, Power. Dasher, power Power Dasher, not Power Master. Different, different race of Transformers. Get with it, John. Um, and he, and he's actually one of my personal favorites because in the '80s you could get three of these characters, which is really, really cool. He was, he was the car. So. And then we got more exclusive Amazon items. That's right. We've got the uh, Alpha Strike Counterforce. Boy, I'd say that ten times fast. And the Decepticon Phantom Strike Squadron. Both of these um, are going to be available uh, Amazon Fall 2019. And then, of course, we can't forget our female. Um, that's characters. right. That's right. So we've got green light, the next combiner limb uh, that, that allows you to help um, helps you to complete Orthea, the official Alita One combiner. Finally, yeah. Finally, right. <laughs> and then, lastly, our uh, beautiful deluxe ratchet. That's right. Great. And, and it, this is a EB Games exclusive. So make sure you swing by our booth. Uh, it's going to be available at EB Games in Canada. Yeah, so that just wraps up our War for Cybertron series um, characters, but we also wanted to bring some um, exclusive uh, Gen Select reveals. That's right, yeah. Those of you who've been really close with our fan site might have seen some of these characters already. 
But it's okay. But for those of you who's uh, never seen a Do you want to see them in person? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're in Canada. Um, you guys have a chance. Yeah. So this line basically is our fan dedicated line. Uh, so we have some awesome characters that we don't put in our main line items. So for those who are really interested in some of these characters, make sure you get your hands through the Gen Select line. And then the first character we're going to officially reveal is... That's right. Nightbird. 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 Nightbird's really, really cool for a lot of fans. This is, you know, it's a Decepticon female Transformer. Uh, technically, not really a Transformer made by humans, but we're not going to say anything about that. Great, a great new head on this one, too. It's, a, it's an exclusive head uh, and a really cool sculpt using the Chromium mold. So pick this one up. But then yeah. the next one is really cool, too. Talk about cool heads. <laughs> the Power Dasher Zatar. So Power Dad, this is the drill Power Dasher, part of the Mail Wave program from the 80s. And uh, he is a uh, uses the, the brunt mold. Um, and that little head piece is actually removable, the drill piece. So you can actually equip somebody with the drill. And uh, he's got the most derpily awesome head I've ever seen on a Transformer. <laughs> So both of these uh, Gen Select figure is going to be available exclusively at um, EV Games, so that's where you'll be able to get them. And uh, the pre-order actually opens today around 3 o'clock, 3.30, yeah. So uh, make sure you get your hands on them. Uh, they're going to be shipping out in a week or two, so they're almost ready. Uh, so, but if you want them, make sure you get them. Wait a minute, before we go on, I feel like we should do another trivia question. Ah, that's a good point. <laughs> yes. I feel like, that's a good I feel like a trivia question. Yeah, oh, this one. Why don't we pull a jet fire from Ooh, this one? Ooh, jet the fire, big, yes. Um, all right. So this guy's available at retail, but a lot of people are having a hard time finding him. He's just that cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which bot is a triple changer? Bruticus or Astrotrain? <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Deborah, you're in charge of this one. Oh, uh, Astrotrain. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sure, you jet fire. All right. <laughs> Okay, so we're starting to wrap up, but we have to mention this next one, which is our big Unicron. War for Cyber Trend Unicron project. Right. Uh, like, on, like on the backs of our shirts, you know, this is this is a really an amazing opportunity. When you look at the original 1986 movie, who would have thought it was ever possible to make a Unicron figure as big and as impressive and as uh, <laughs> and is as completely transforming as as uh, the Unicron has. A lot of fans might have the Armada version that has you know blocky legs underneath, but this version of Unicron is a perfect sphere. And we we went to great lengths to kind of watch parts of the movie, and um, really take take note of all those little details. Uh, and as you see him drifting through space, you know, and and in planet mode and robot mode, he's menacing. But then having his head pop off was something. We knew fans wanted, and we were able to do it. So d during the campaign, we had a little announcement to make, and I went online and made a video and explained this cool new feature to all you fans out there. All right, John, I know you told me not to put this in there, but I put it in there, so let's it's, look at that. It's now. weird seeing myself on a screen while I'm in a panel. Yes, I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I gotta do it. I have to do it. Hey Transformers fans, John here from Hasbro. We know how much the Transformers community loves that epic scene from the end of the 1986 movie. Unicron's head orbiting through space. I'm proud to announce that Unicron will indeed have a removable head, and it will also come with a removable faceplate that has battle damage features, so fans can swap out the clean faceplate for a battle damage faceplate. To learn more and to back the campaign, visit HasbroPulse.com. Cool. <laughs> I think, I think before we go any further, we should do one more trivia. Right? Ooh, yeah. yeah. Uh, two left here, but we'll let's jump into for Ecto 1. Which Decepticon did Megatron leave behind on Cybertron? Shockwave or Soundwave? Shockwave. Oh, yes. that's that That's was right. Fast. I feel like we're tossing waffles here. Yeah, it's like, you get a jump fire, you get a jump fire. <laughs> Yeah, but our Unicron was such a uh, combined effort. It with really was. So many different yeah. partners from our Pulse team to all the way to Japan and our Tsukara Tony team. And I know our legendary designer, Kunihiro san, who's been designing Transformers, I think, before I was born. Yeah, he worked, he, he worked on the original Star Saber. Um, he he uh, did Omega Supreme, which just came out. He's like, he's really a living legend. I mean, the dude's a rock star. Um, and it was his passion project. 
no joke for two years. He's been working on Unicron for two years. There's just like that much engineering that went into it. And those guys are they're they're incredible fans. You know, they they'll stay there late working and, and it's just an incredible honor to be able to work with them. Yeah. So that's our TT uh, our partners here. So this is our last slide here, the largest Transformers toy ever created. That's right. It's self-supporting. A lot of questions. A lot of fans are saying, so can I, can I stand him without the base? You absolutely can. And in fact, all the photos that we took of him that you see online are all like, it's supporting, it's using its own weight. It's incredibly poseable, rocker ankles. Um, and it, obviously, you do need the base to support the planet because we haven't uh, really figured out a way to do anti-gravity yet. I'm still working on that. Yeah. We I have Back to the Future shoes, sort of, that I made my own, but yeah, yeah, not there yet. And you're right when you say, like, we've been working on this for such a long time, because I feel like it was, like, January 2018 when we kicked off this project, and it's, like, it's finally coming to life. After it early. is, it is, but, you know, to really get it over the end, this is, like, this is our moment, you know, the, and when I was a little kid, um, one of my friends, his dad was a doctor, had the, um, the USS flag, you know, a blue carpet in the basement, and I was like, man, this is... Someday, I, I wish I could get the flag, and I never was able to get it. For Transformers fans, really, Unicron is our moment, and this moment, unless it's, it, it, we need the backer support in order for it to make it happen, and uh, th this is our chance to do it. And um, when I've talked to fans about, like, what, what toy do you want? Unicron is the one, so we need those, we need those backers. This is going to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's been an honor to work on this thing. Yeah, all right, so that pretty much wraps up our uh, panel for today, but I know that you guys probably have some questions yeah. uh, and probably wanted to, you know, ask us stuff, so we wanted to leave some uh, few minutes in, in for Q&A, so for those who have questions, are we going to pass one to Wait, I think we have maybe one more trivia question, oh, one more trivia, and then we're, we're a fairly cozy room here, so yeah. we need the mic, we need the mic, but I'm sure everybody's got... Okay, awesome. Ooh, one, jet, one more jet fire. One more jet fire. Ooh. Before he received the Matrix of Leadership, who was Optimus Prime known as? And I'm not actually going to offer up the, the down here. Brian Cox. Very correct. Oh. Awesome. Okay. To all our one. And and with that, we're going to open up the floor for questions. So um, if you if if you want to call them out and, and then we'll walk around with the with the mic, I believe Absolutely. might be the best way to do it. Absolutely. Right up here. Actually, maybe we don't need to. If the unicorn doesn't make the funding, will there be a new new way to? If the Unicorn doesn't make the funding, will there be any way for us fans to get the, to purchase the ride? Yeah. If the Unicorn doesn't make the funding, will there, will there be any way to purchase the items? Because a lot of people are asking if there's other ways to purchase the Unicorn. So basically, the uh, the way that we did the Hazard project is that Unicorn can only get it through uh, Hasbro Pulse website. Yeah. So we won't have it like in retails, we won't have it in, uh, you know, in stores or anything like that. So Hasbro Pulse is pretty much what that's right. It's the only way to get it. If it doesn't meet the, uh, the backers, if it doesn't meet the backers, uh, basically... The project will go back into the dead zone. We actually are in the production. We actually are pulling that uh, backers. That's correct. But I would say about Unicron is that we are going to have some new announcements. Uh, that's right. That's coming yes. out later today and next week, even more announcements next week. So. Keep your uh, eyes um, and then uh, in tune for fans channels and, uh, and our official Instagram. That's right. Also like Instagram, so we do have some new announcements and new things that's going to be. That's right. Even more cool stuff. <laughs> okay. Next question. Another question. Did you want to come up and then? Yeah, sure. Just wondering for the what were the exclusives uh, War of Cyber for Cybertron, like the cartoon Megatron and cartoon Optimus. That's right, yeah. As, as well as like the G1 uh, Soundwave. Is there like an official release date? I've seen like pictures of people getting them, but they're not on the website. There's no date anywhere. There's nothing. Yeah, I think each one of these of those uh, characters has a different uh, release date. So I think one of them is um, ten one, and the other one is. Uh, 11 one and the third one is the 12 one. I can't think of top of my mind, but uh, I'll be down at the booth so that I can check the, the, the dates and then I'll tell you which one is uh, available at which. Okay, Soundwave is in stores right now. Okay, that's it. Okay. okay, it is in stores. It's been a bit limited. There is, we are working on getting some additional stock. Okay. It just uh, runs out of 
same as the uh, the cassette two packs are in stores right now. They're working their way into stores, but um, various parts of the country have have okay. gotten. So are they super limited? Because like I've been to Walmart, like employees don't even know if they exist. It, it, Ontario seems to have been a little slower to get some of the stock. It seems to have been hitting out on, on some of the... I'm from the back of Okay, so it's um, not super limited, but it is... But do you do it in keeping with the... But what are some of Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Come on, I like hard questions. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, there, I knew I'd get somebody. Awesome. You can just you can yeah. I, 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 I can I can I can I can hear no problem. I'll repeat the question for the crowd. Yeah. Right. Uh, will we ever see any localization for like the perfect effect uh, line in Japan or not? So the um, the question was: Will we see any localization for the perfect effect line? Perfect effects. Oh, FX yeah. line. So say perfect effect is not Hasbro. Okay. Um, <laughs> I. F FX line. Um, do you mean like the uh, which character specifically? Uh, uh, he, he goes by Leo Convoy in the uh, comic books, but like, he's oh, like Leo those. Convoy. Oh, those. Yeah, yeah. I believe yeah, those. Convoy. Yeah. So, so Leo Leo Convoy and um, that's the lion Takara just did. I, I believe to to a certain extent we do try to get um, a lot of those Takara items. Um, the uh, Seacons, the, the King Poseidon, Piranacon guys, we were trying to get onto um, Pulse.com. So I would say Pulse.com typically is the place that we're offering those items. But I'm, I, I can't speak with 100% confidence about Leo Convoy, though. So that, those are actually, um, in Canada, those um, Tarakomi items are available to, um, through EB Games. They go up on their website. Wow, I'm so glad you're here to answer that one. <laughs> Leo, Leo Convoy is not live right now on EV Games. Oh, that's so cool. That's a great figure, too. It's really awesome. Yeah. All right, I have one question yep. here. Here? Oh, I like your t-shirt. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, this is more just kind of going off that one, but it's, uh, the ordering in Canada on Hasbro Pulse is horrendous. The, the ordering system is good, but shipping is a killer. Yeah. It's it'll double the purchasing of of your figures just to ship the thing here. Okay. Um, is there? I know you guys aren't really involved in that whole thing, but can can that be looked at? It just is because it's it's crossing the border because of your shipping uh, is you know it's it's killing any kind of commer commerce over here. Yeah, absolutely. So Pulse launched you know, earlier this year, and what we are working on is. Step one was having it available to Canadian fans. Step two for us is we're working on ways to either distribute from Canada or bring down the, the shipping costs. So we are working on that with the team right now. We don't have a timeline on how soon that will be, but we know it's important for our Canadian fans, and we are working on that. So we will have a solution. Thank you. <laughs> hey, buddy. How's it going? Good. Yourself. You good? So last year at San Diego, you had the Gold Bumblebee in the in the day form of form, and then in the game the where he was in the Bumblebee movie form. And they came with two cassettes from Japan, and I came. They were they were very. It was the same set of cassettes. They were just the very yeah. colors. Yeah, the the Japanese uh, exclusives yeah. with the clear guys again. Yes. So fast forward at SDCC, you announced the uh, the ability to get the other set of combining. With friends, but they were in the original G1 colors. Are you considering going back and doing those ones from last year, but in their original G1 colors, as opposed to translucent? So the the two sets that were released it's, uh, in the United States were um, we put the VW version and then the Camaro version. We had one of each, so we had a clear version in there that was sort of like the chase, and then. The, so you had to get both sets to get the G1 colors. We actually did go out and buy those tapes, which are wicked expensive. <laughs> so we were able to get them. So you, you, if you had both of those sets, I think the question is, are we going to rebundle those characters and resell them? Um, we get that question a lot. I don't know for with 100% certainty if we are. Yeah, at this point, we're, we don't have uh, plans to 
do that in the near future, but yeah. we do get that uh, comment a lot. So it could definitely be uh, uh, something that they think about. Yeah, I think it, a lot of it depends on how the frenzy uh, Zaru um, set does. What, and so if you like that kind of packaging line look, uh, just get vocal online and really we listen to you and, and let us know and we'll try to put that second set together for you. Yeah, and some of those skewed uh, characters, I know our fans really love them, so sometimes those are things that we try to put in Gen Selects in that uh, collection. So sure, totally. I know that uh, our Canadian fans haven't gotten the Gen Selects line yet, but you guys now have, so in the future, hopefully you can do something like that in that line. Yeah. Can, I, can I just add on that? Just yeah. based on what you said. Sure. You said you bought the actual original cassettes. Yeah, yeah, we did. To refabricate. Yes. So the molds for some of the old G1s like Wheeljack and Dinobots, they're gone. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a real heartbreaker. And I, you know, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. So, so we've taken great care to try to capture which tools we can. We put them out through uh, Walmart, has been a great partner in releasing them. But in a lot of cases, the most notable recently was Optimus Prime. The original Optimus Prime, the reason why it didn't come with the trailer, was we had actually a real tool Optimus Prime's G1 mold because the old one from when I was a kid was, was completely falling apart. There's a couple characters out there, um, to keep those molds going, it requires tons of maintenance and oil and stuff like that. So um, there's very few of those those guys left. It's, it's incredibly heartbreaking, but we, we would be able to retool them if we had an enthusiastic response online. So if there's like people like bring back will hashtag bring back will jack or something like that, like absolutely we could do. But it, it is a bit of an investment on our end, and uh, I think we're excited by how the program Walmart is doing. And just let us know, uh, you know, come to us in conventions, uh, or or make your your voice heard online, you know, Instagram or Twitter, or any other social network. Any questions? Okay, okay. I'm back. So building up on upon that, like, are there rules, regulations, and laws between making a toy in the 80s and today that you have any experience with, like materials that you can no longer use? Yeah, yeah, there absolutely are. You know, a lot of the things that, that would pass in the 80s we wouldn't be able to do or we'd have to change. Uh, the, a good example is as launchers. You know, a lot of the secret guys had little launchers that we had to actually put regulation tips in that passed through our choke tube hand standards. Um, you know, but for the most part, a lot of those G1 toys, they, the reason why they were, they're more expensive is they're just more sturdily built. They use, you know, die-cast metal. They, um, they're built in really an awkward way. You know, there's lots of steel pins and things like that. And uh, it, it just, it's a little clumsy to tool them up. It's uh, We've had the molding efficiencies down for stuff in the War for Savage Online. But with new safety standards, we really want, really want to make sure we keep things in line with um, what's what's going to be safe for today? And uh, whenever we do a release like that, yes, we have to check it a hundred times till Tuesday. It's crazy. There's one in the back here. Oh, there's one there, and then this guy in the blue shirt also. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just want to say first, it's great to see you here in Canada. Oh, thank you. You know, it's so good to be here. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I've really been appreciating how much you guys have been ramping up your uh, kind of face appearances in, in uh, Transformers Media, like you know, Cyber Desk, etc. Uh, I was wondering. No, you know that's a really great suggestion. I know, I know. Over in WonderCon, uh, Yuki and and some of the team do. They definitely do interviews. A lot of times, those guys don't. Um, they don't speak. A lot of them don't speak English well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think we'll pass that note on to to our to car friends and let them know that yeah. you know if they should come by. Sometimes like New York Toy Fair, they come by though. Yeah, and then I think for this year we reveal the new masterpiece item. I know we from one of the PT designer in Shanghai where they revealed it in Asia. So I think those are, um, they're really open to doing something like that. It's just, oh, yeah. they're, like John says, some of them just don't speak English, so. Even written interviews, because every, every time you have gotten a few, like, done with the uh, Japanese hobby magazines, it's just so wonderful to hear about, like, um, how you can trace back some of those work. Mm -hmm. from yeah. The masterpiece that comes out, they'll mention, yeah. oh, I worked on this figure in Cybertron. Yeah, it's, it's DNA. It's great. Those guys, those guys really are incredible, incredible geniuses, and and they, their ability to figure out how they transform from one mode to the other. It's really, it's it's a fine art, and, and it's an honor to work with them. And yeah, we'll, we'll we'll try to get more of those guys in designers' desk. That's a great suggestion. I was just wondering if you had any uh, insight into how Hasbro chooses which masterpiece figures. Uh 
get released. Well, do you mean movie masterpiece or do you mean classic like the, G1? The G1. Masterpiece? It's, like, it's been a while. And is it because Toys R Us went away in the US? Or? Oh, no. No, I, I, I can answer that question. The, the masterpiece, classic G1 and Beast Wars masterpiece characters, and, and recently, like Leo Convoy and those guys, those are all decided by the domestic. Uh, Takara team. Takara has, there's part of Takara that we work with specifically and that helps us design like War for Cybertron and Cyberverse and stuff like that. And then there's another smaller team that does the Masterpiece um, stuff and they typically decide it for their Japanese market so we don't really have much input on which G1 characters um, they're in a release. We have visibility to it we know which, when they're coming. Um, but we don't have a lot of influence as to like say like hey I really want to do you know jazz but it's not quite that simple now with movie masterpiece we're we're directly controlling it um, but yeah the G one it's it's sort of every time we go to visit them in, in Tokyo we we find like, oh it's like you know they cake boss us they kind of like there it is and like okay that's I guess that's what we're getting <laughs> so yeah in complete transparency that's how it works yeah. Thank you. We appreciate how passionate you are. Oh, we got another question. Sure. Yeah. All right. So you've got. Uh, I'll take All right. So we've got the uh, Ghostbusters and Transformers crossover that's doing really well. Yeah. The yeah, comic book great. is killing, and the uh, uh, the the toys are amazing. Thank you. Um, <laughs> this has got to be, you know, you know, cranking out ideas. You possibilities about what could be next. Ah. You know, Ooh. Ooh. That, that, there that. have been fan <laughs> art, you know, over the years. People have been pushing other properties together. Yeah. You guys have other properties you can push together. You can know? I ask the question back? Do you sure. have a property that you want us to collaborate with? Oh man, I mean, that's put you in spot. I would. I mean, <laughs> I would love a Back to the Future DeLorean. You know, Ooh, that's a good idea. That's, uh, that's, it's John's favorite movie. That's a, so, that's, yeah. that's a dream. <laughs> one, of, one of my favorites. I mean, it's up there. you could possibly even kind of bring back G.I. Joe in a way, like yeah. by pulling G.I. Yeah. Joe yeah. in there. G.I. Joe a lot. Mask and Transformers and G.I. Joe all fit. Like, it's it's all there. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I can speak to that. I, I uh, was asked this at San Diego Comic Con, so I can kind of give a similar response here. Is we want a way, this is sort of an answer by being ambiguous, but still an answer. We do, we do want to acknowledge certain anniversaries. So if, if you want to think about, you know, inside the mind of Hasbro, we, a lot of times we'll, we're, we work about three, four years out, and we'll look at what anniversaries are coming up, and we want to make sure that we celebrate things, or if there's some other kind of promotion or something that comes along. But we also look at the fan zeitgeist, and we speak to fans here, like, he, he just called out Knight Rider. It's sometimes it's those little things that we all, those memories we all share that resonate that make great Transformers. So it, it, it's this, uh, we put all those ideas into the cauldron and we spin it around. Sometimes uh, what comes out surprises us and other times it's very, very much calculated. But things like G.I. Joe and stuff like that, yeah, you're right. Low hanging fruit or Power Rangers. Like, I think a lot of it has to do with you know, Hasbro is a very big company, and we have to think about what is our global fan base going to get a request. And if you want something, again, make your voices heard, and we're always listening. Yeah, that's, I mean, and that's how we decided we were going to do Ghostbusters, because yeah, I think that yeah. was a number one class that everybody was talking about. Oh, yeah, it made so much sense so at San Diego, fans. too. It's like, yeah, or, yeah. or like fan, uh, like a fan expo. Like, yeah. of course, you're going to have those two things match up. Yeah. It's just so much fun. And, then, and you're right, like the fact that it was a 35th anniversary for both of us, and it was their 35th anniversary of their first movie, and this is our friend's 35th. So it just really, really worked out really well. Sony was like, absolutely. Sony is so cool to work with, too. They're yeah. great. The big geeks like, that, like us. Yeah, absolutely. Unless you're inspired. All right. I think this wraps okay. up. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys for being such incredible fans. Uh, if you guys are going to be down at the EE Games group, there's some great product available down there. And uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.